Okay, so we've taken care of basically the construction right the way over of our Spitfire down in here. And it's looking very, very nice. Quick pro tip, obviously if you want your control surfaces all to be flat, okay, with no deflection in them at all, just pop a couple of little clips on them like this as they're drying, and that way it will hold them perfectly in alignment. Again, nice little thing to do, obviously, if you other things as well, you might be in a situation where, like myself, I like to put a little bit of deflection into it. So obviously, you know, you pretend that it's been caught in the wind, so perhaps have the rudder slightly deflected is a nice touch. That actually tail planes, things like that, drooped a little bit, or perhaps risen, depending which way the pilot has obviously left the controls. And again, things get caught in the wings, people moving things as well. So sometimes if you have an aileron, it's slightly deflected down, you might have the other one slightly deflected up. And again, it's personal choice exactly how you do with those. So what we've done now, we've actually attached the wing sections, but we've come across some of our old favorites as little problems that we can have. So we're gonna have a look at the best ways of dealing with them. So as you can see down in here, if we just move to the, the close up, you can see that we've got a little bit of a problem down in here. This side, no gap at all, but unfortunately this side, we have got a little bit of a gap down in there. And again, we've actually now glued the tails on, as you can see, pretty good on the top, but unfortunately underneath we got a little couple of gaps down in there and again around here on the front we've got a little bit we've got this infill section down in here with the uh, the actual intake and then down in here we've got some pretty nasty gaps and again we might have a little bit of a nasty gap over here so these are the types of the problems you're always going to get if you're modeling all right but again there's lots of different things you can do to combat those and fix those all right so what we're going to do is have a look at some of my favorite ones. So down in here, obviously we've got this gap running down in this one. You could technically just come along with your filler uh, and start planting filler into it, but it's quite a nasty gap uh, and it's quite big and there may be a little quicker way of doing it. One is this. So this is plastic art, which is like quarter of a mil thick. It's about the thinnest I like to work with and it's what I call sort of fingernail thickness. So if I can get my fingernail in the gap here, I will always try and, try and use a little bit of plastic art. Now, why I use plastic card and just not filler. The great thing with plastic card is, is that it's solid. So when you actually put it into the gap itself, a little bit of glue down in there, it's quite a clean finish because what you can actually do is just cut it, light sand, and your job is done. So it's a clean way of fixing things, but it does have its own problems as well. If you use anything thicker than sort of quarter mil uh, plastic card like this, what can happen is, is that when you add the glue, it just turns to mush uh, and makes a little bit of a mess. So this is really as thin as you can get. Also, it's no good for something like uh, down on here. So obviously this is probably about the same thickness, but it's got no way of biting into it. So it's great for doing areas where, you know, perhaps you can use it, you know, down in the back here, if we had a bit of a step, you could just slide that down into there, use it a little bit as a filler, but on flat things like in here, and again, on things like this, we're gonna take care of in a minute, there's no way of it actually getting a grip. So fine for these types of things. So what I tend to do is you just place it into the gap itself. And again, we're just gonna push it in like that. Again, it's all in there, it's taken, it's in. We're gonna take a little bit of the quick set glue, and then all we're gonna do is just gonna put a thin bead down one side, just down in here. And then we're just gonna come in with a very thin bit on the other side. And again, a little bit just on the front. And away we go and we're going to leave it now it's important to leave that to totally dry off the thing is if you come through a little bit soon uh, and cut it off what it can actually do is sink back in what's going to happen now is that both sides of this and then going to be melting into that gap again but what we're going to do is we're going to very lightly cut it off a little bit higher so it's actually a little bit up uh, above where it's going to go so it's got the ability to sink in what we can do is just take a pair of scissors and we're just going to cut it a little bit shorter. This will prevent this getting knocked. So it's in there now, and we're just gonna leave that wedge in there to do its bit. We're using the quicker set glue. It's probably gonna take around about 20 minutes to go off. Once it's gone off and we're happy with it, we'll just run a blade right the way down in there, getting quite close to it, but leaving a little bit on there just so we can sand it down and plane it in. Great thing about it, it's quick. That entire job will be maybe 45 minutes and it's done, you can move on to your neck one, which is absolutely great. But it said, it's not for every area. So underneath here, we've got two little problems down in here. So again, the other sort of things we have to think about is that we've got riveting detail all around these as well. So we don't wanna make a mess of any of those. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna protect those areas with a little bit of tape. So all we're going to do is <coughs> pop in here, 
get rid of some of the swath. We're going to run pretty close, but not exactly right up to the edge. And we're just going to put a little bit of tape like that. And again, we're going to do it on the other side. So what we're doing, we're just protecting the detail that is around it. And again, this is just one of those areas where personal choice will come in. So the type of filler you want to use. So do you want to use a solvent based filler uh, and a putty and things like that? Do you want to use an acrylic based one? So for this particular one, what we're going to do is we're going to grab our acrylic putty, which I put down somewhere, Here it is. Okay, uh, which is this stuff. So this is perfect plastic putty. And again, it's an acrylic base. So what does acrylic mean? Easy cleanup. We can clean this up with water. Now, if you're using any type of putties like this, as we know, and we spoke about before when we were using the actual sprue goo version of it, or the actual uh, styrene based filler, you're gonna get shrinkage and stuff like that. So just be mindful what you're doing. This isn't a silver bullet that is gonna fix everything uh, and you're never gonna have a problem. You still will. So just be mindful of that as well. So what we're going to do is we're just gonna grab got over here uh, a couple of little bits of old sprue down in here so actually what we can do is we can just literally pop a little bit on your area like this and then what we're going to do is we're going to just do a light job of just putting this in. so we're just going to come up and we're just going to push a little bit in to each area then we're just going to grab this down and again we're going to need a little bit more in there again so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to grab on top here and then again making sure we're right in amongst it all and again you're probably better off to use too much filler than not enough because the problem you've got is if you don't use enough filler then you can be in a situation where you're gonna to have to come back time and time again to sort of take care of it. So all we're gonna do now is just popping that down in there just to squash that all in there, just like that. And now we're gonna leave it. We're not gonna to attempt to clean that up. In fact, we've got sort of tail surfaces aren't even glued on this one, so we can take those off. We're not gonna actually attempt to clean that up until it's totally dry. This isn't like some of the other ones you might have seen where you use like um, alcohol-based uh, or lacquer-based thinners as well, just to wipe them off. This is a water-based one, so it goes straight in there just like that. If you do want to use a different type, you can use thicker type putty. So we've got Mr. Dissolve Putty just down in here. And again, this is one of those ones that does separate a lot. All right. So make sure you give it a damn good mix up. And what you can actually do is rub this one down, sand it down, but also you can use a little bit of thinners just to actually get this to come off. So this one can be particularly messy. And to be honest, it's why I don't use it that often. And again, so the great thing with this is you can pop it on with a brush. So if we just get an older brush down in here, and what we're going to do is we're just going to grab a bit, pop it down in here. And again, we've protected our little area down on there, so that's quite nice. And uh, what you can do with this one, you can literally just brush this in. Now, downside to this particular one is it's going to take a little bit to dry. So this isn't going to be a quick fix on the drying front. This is going to take a little bit more just to uh, fill this all in. All right. But the plus side of this particular one, it's structural. So the great thing about this is this one is going to physically melt itself to the plastic as well. The acrylic one is almost just sitting on the surface. So if you were to actually bend the part, it will crack very, very easily and you'll be left with an area. So obviously that is it. Think of this one as somewhere between the two. So when we were using our uh, styrene filler, obviously that's made of the plastic, it's going through. This one is a putty base, it's lacquer base, it's running very similar to this one. It's just a bit above a personal uh, preference on which way you want to do it. This one over here, to actually melt it takes quite a bit. So you could come in with lacquers and it will melt it, but think of it trying to melt plastic, it's quite difficult. The great thing with this is we can come along with a lacquer thinners or an alcohol-based thinners, it will melt this and it will wipe it away. But it's not gonna do it as cleanly as you'll see in a minute with the other one. So that one is taken care of just in there. Some of the other little areas you can have problems, and we can use this one for this particular version as well 
is down in here. We've got a slight sink mark. You might see it just there and across here. It's not particularly nice. So again, this is a good candidate for this. So you can just come along. And again, you could use your sprue goo uh, filler, the homemade stuff as well. But this one's quite nice for this particular job. And then again, as we're knocking off that, which I don't want to, uh, we can just take in here some of this and again we can just tap it along these areas and it will dry in quite nicely and again rescribing should be quite straightforward with this one and again this is drying pretty quick already so again it's actually quite nice for this type of job and again if it gets a little bit thick uh, you can actually just pop along with a little bit of thinners in this just to help this one go off so again we're just going to go right across in there and take care of that and then to be honest this one under here we're going to do the same way as well so again we can just grab a little bit of this and if you wanted to you could easily just come along and tape to protect the areas but as you see here hopefully it's not so much of a problem we can just pop this in here and sort of fill these little gaps and again we're just going to pop it down in there a little bit more just in here and clean up with your brush obviously you just use a little bit of thinners and that takes care of those down in there and then same thing along this one for this wingtip area because it is a technically it's going to be a panel line we can just pop a bit of this in okay just taking your time just popping this one so this is actually very similar to the sprue goo but just think of it melting its way in and again that's that one taken care of so that's actually looking very nice and again you want to look around everywhere on your model so again we've got a little gap down in here it's probably around about 50 50 so again we're just going to pop generous amount right the way over in here because it's somewhat structural and we can sand and we can easily take care of those areas so that's those ones down in there just like that so that's your different ways so what we're going to do we'll let those all dry off and then we'll come back and we'll show you about removing those and then the cleanup. Right then, so these are all dried on. So if we have a look at the areas we've got. So the first one is we've got this, which is totally glued into place. It's not going to come off. So what we can do, we can trim this down. So a couple of ways of trimming it. You can either come in with a pair of scissors or you can come in with a knife. So to be honest, I always think the knife's probably the easiest and quickest way. So we just pop the knife across, <clears throat> give it a rub. And there it is down in there. So as you can probably see, we just moved over to the close up. You can see just a little bit of trim area on there. So again, this is one of those ones where you can just grab my glasses, see what we're doing here a bit better. You can literally just lay your blade on and then lightly scribe. So what you're hoping to do is to just to nip it in. And there we go and that has now filled hopefully you can see perfectly our joint and you could get away with not doing it apart from the bit where I've missed there and just scraped it with a knife you can see you really don't need to do any more filling or taking any parts off of this and again probably could do with a slightly sharper knife but you can see what we're getting Bit up there. And the chances are this bit here would easily be done with a bit of glue. But that's really straightforward. And as I said, you could then come along if you wanted to and just pop in here with a sanding sponge and just give it a light rub. But you can see there's no gap either side. That's actually a perfect joint. And that's probably the easiest one of doing them all, purely because it's not needing any other attention whatsoever. You just go straight into primer and away you go with that one. But some of the other ones, so if we just move over here, you can see this is our other one, which we see. So we can take off our tape. That leaves our little area. So this one down in here is actually quite a difficult area to get to. And the other thing to look out for is we've got lots of bits in there. So you could just pop in there with like a, a skinny stick, you know, which is a great one for popping in there or a normal sander. But the great thing about this is you, you just wet these with water. So we just give it a bit of a, a wet and then we're just going to rub this 
over the area. And there we go. This cleans this up with just, I just tease out the, the corner bit just to get down in that little corner. And then, there we go. That cleans that out and takes care of that seam beautifully. So really, just like the other one, just got a nice little bit of white line just down in there. And to be honest, we've got a little bit of filler just in that crack. So we'll just get rid of that. Final white, and we are absolutely good to go. And as you can see, we've got no filling of up any of the riveting details, and it is just a nice way. So that's fine. But if you were structural and you put any weight on that, that would easily crack. This little guy over here, it's a little bit more involved. So this one is actually our filler, but as you can probably see, it's taken the gap really, really well. The great thing about this one is that it sort of sinks itself in. It tends to sort of self-level itself out and it goes down in there, but normal water is gonna do nothing to that. So what you're gonna need is a tiny bit of lacquer thinners. Now I'm just gonna pop a little bit of lacquer thinners on a, a cocktail stick. Uh, sorry, in a little tub down in here, and we'll grab a little bit of thinners on a thing here, and we're just going to give this a quick wipe over. Now, the big thing is, is that this will do exactly the same as it did on the other side, but it will also slightly melt the plastic, which again is great because it makes it very, very tough join, and it makes it somewhat structural. So I'm just going to pop a. Uh, a blade just down in this corner just so I can get my little bit of in here. So we're just gonna re-wet that in the thinners again. And again this is lacquer thinners so it will slightly attack the plastic but as long as you don't pull it around too much you can probably see that that's completely gone down in there. So again, it's a slightly neater fill. And now this is lacquer thinners, this is dried off, that's in there. The great thing about using lacquer thinners is that's fully structural. So if you were doing something like a wing joint and perhaps you had a little bit of wing weight into it, or is a little bit of wing flex or something else in there, it will grab it. It's not gonna crack under any, under any circumstances at all. So these are the ones that we had under here. Let me these bits of tape. This is exactly the same type of thing. So this under here, you could probably come along with little bit of thinners and again if you use like a rapid dry thinners the great thing about it is that it evaporates so quick it doesn't affect anything else but you can just lightly rub over these areas so forget this thing about coming in and obviously popping in with sanders and making damage and things and you're just taking off that slight bit of height all around in there like that and that's taking care of it absolutely fantastic same goes with these over here so again, this is a nice flat area. So if you wanted to, you can come along with a sanding sponge. So I've just got one of our skinnies here again, and we're just gonna go, I'm just gonna walk it and sand down that entire little line. And you can see it does a really, really nice job. So what I like to do is that if you pop along like this, just to take out the height, and again, a little bit troublesome because it's near that but that's now in there. Then we use a little bit of this and we just give it a quick wipe over. Now this gets rid of all the scratching and all the other bits of filler all around it. So now it's got that perfect fill line just like that. And away you go. A little bit more tricky is this one down in here because this has got a little bit of a step in there as well. So we are going to use a sander because it's got a little bit of height difference between the two. So again, by sanding at a 45 degree across this edge, we can then blend both together. So we just go over and then what you're going to have obviously as it makes the rotation this area on this side is slightly higher at the back so this is the high side this is the low side but on this one this is the low side that's the high side so it's just going to take a little bit of work just to blend those in and again we've got a small little line so we've got a deviation in the height and we've got a little bit on the edge which we'll just pop a sander into there as well and then again just trying to keep 45 degrees with your sanding just to aid the, the balance and then again into these areas and then once we've got 
pretty much it all off and just come along with our thinners and we can just blend those two in now if it starts to pull and starts to drag add a little bit more thinners and that will just make it slide a bit better and again just do these areas on the edges where we sand it because this will melt all of this together and there we go we're all set to go. And by the time we get some primer on there, we are absolutely great. So again, this little guy down in here, you might remember we had that small little sink. So what we're going to do, 45 degrees, right the way over. So again, you can see it's taking it off just there, but here it's got that little step just in there. So again, we're not pushing too hard. We're literally just holding it over, but we're just gonna run this right the way over. All right, then we're going to cut to the sponge side just to polish in. And there we go. That's that little sink mark that it had there. Same thing again. We're just going to add a little bit of thinners. Quick wipe over just to get rid of the thinners out of all the holes. And that's it. That's that taking that in there. There's a little bit still needed at the front. And away we go. And that is literally it. That's the quickest and the easiest way you'll be doing any of your sanding and filling. The rest of it is all okay. We're good at the top uh, and all these other areas. But that gives you a couple of different options on obviously sanding and then obviously filling, what filler, when and where. As I said, I do like to use the sort of lacquer base ones, the proper fillers, if it's on a wing seam, because let's face it, sometimes you might pick a model up by its wing, and if it's quite a heavy model, you can put a little bit of weight into there. And if you've got, you know, just a normal, uh, you know, water-based uh, acrylic, shall we say, filler it's not going to eat into that surface it's just filling the void and then obviously it's going to crack and then you're going to have a crack into it where this one you know full well will hold it as good as the actual glue will and all the rest of it the easiest and simplest way is to use this one we did in this wing route if you can get away with a plastic card shim down in there just a bit of glue each side that will fill it no problem cut it with a knife it's job it doesn't even need any more and for doing wing roots and things like that that is probably the best and easiest one to do especially if it's a completely deep void as in there's nothing behind it that you can actually put the filler onto just like that. So anyway, that's that done. So what we're going to do next, is obviously we'll look at riveting, we're going to look at rescribing, and then we're going to look about masking up and attaching clear parts.